<laughs> All right, so how do you compress files on a Mac? It's probably pretty easy. You probably know how to do that, but does it really end up saving a lot of space? That's what we're gonna find out today. Let's go. All right, so today we got a fun one. So everyone probably knows how to compress files on a Mac. If not, I'm gonna show you. You can zip them up, you can unzip them. You basically have multiple reasons why you wanna do that, which I'll get into in a second here. But really what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you basically how much, you know, how much space can you actually save by compressing the files. And uh, really it's gonna be dependent on the file type and that's what I'm gonna show you today. So we're gonna do some examples of zipping up various things and showing you about how much you save. And it really depends again on the file type that you're actually trying to compress. So if you compress something that's actually one type of file, you might get a lot more savings. And if you compress something that's a different type of file, you might get almost no savings. And so it's probably good to understand that when you're compressing files. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of get into that really quickly to show you some examples. Hopefully you'll like this kind of video. Let's get into it, but before I do that, I wanna kinda of list the three reasons why you'd actually wanna compress a file that I can think of, and they are. So number one would probably be, again, like we just said, to save space. So you're compressing a file, you may not be using it you know, anytime soon or something, you have a limited space on your computer, you compress it, you zip it, and now it's gonna usually be less space. That's what we're gonna find out in this video later. Second reason is, is let's say you're gonna email something to somebody and in the email you actually wanna go ahead and you have, let's say, 100 different files. You don't wanna email someone 100 files. You can compress and zip them up into something which is gonna compress them into a single file. You can send that over to them. They're not confused. They get that file, they unzip it, and there you go. There's 100 files for them. That's another reason. The third reason might be archiving. Um, like you're not gonna use files for a really, really long time and you have hundreds of files, you just don't want to have them you know, dealing with them all the time, you can zip them into a clean package, store them somewhere on your computer, move them to a backup drive, and unzip them later if you want to. So that's basically what I can think of as three basic reasons. But let's go ahead and find out what this video is all about. Let's find out exactly how much you're actually going to save with some real-world examples here. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show people is how am I gonna test this? How am I gonna compress files on a Mac? So I created this folder here. Let's go in there. The very top, I've, we're gonna go through all these folders in due time, but the very first one, let's just get into there. So here's a bunch of files. Let's say you wanna copy these and you want to go ahead and send these to someone in an email or you wanna just compress them. All you have to do is you select all the different files, select them all, and then you just right click and then down here you go to compress seven items right there. Click on that. What it's gonna do is it's gonna compress them. See it doing it right now? And it's gonna create an archive.zip folder which is gonna contain all of these all these uh, files right now are gonna be in this zip file. And you can see it's gonna be slightly smaller than the total of all of them, so it's not compressing them that much. But there it is, there's the zip file, so you've compressed them. And you can now send this to somebody in an email. To uncompress them, it's super simple. If you get that in the email or something, you just double click on them. It's gonna, right there, extract them. It did it so quickly. And now we have a folder called archive. If you open that up, it's gonna have all those same files that you had, you know, that you actually just compressed. So there it is. You, you compressed it and you uncompressed it. Compression, you have to right click and click that, uh, compress the files. To uncompress them, you just double click it. Um, you can do the same thing really quickly with folders. So if I go into here, let's say I have, you know, let's say these files I want to send over to, to a client or something in an email. It's just confusing because there's folders involved. What I want to do is just select every one again, select them all, right click, click compress right here, five items. It's going to go ahead and create, a, it's going to compress them. It's going to create this archive.zip again. You'll see it here in a second. It's going ahead and compressing everything. There it is. I can send that to the client. They, If they get it and they double click on that, what's going to happen is it's going to open it up. It's going to create a folder. They can open that up. And now it's got all the files and folders just like they were that I sent them. So that's very easy. That's how I'm going to do this test. So the, the question is, is how much, how much data am I saving by compressing? How much data am I actually going to save? Let's figure it out. And is, does it matter on the file type? All right, now for the fun. What I'm gonna do is I have four different folders here, one with JPEGs only, one with MP4 movies only, one with text and PDFs and Word, a whole mix, and one with only text. We're gonna see how much each of these I can compress, what percentage, so wait for those stats at the very end. So the very first folder, if you look at it again, I only have JPEGs in here. So if I write, if I go like this, I right click on this, click get info. The folder before compression, I'm gonna look at this number here, not up here, I'm looking right here. It's 257. 0.5 megabytes right there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and right click on this, compress it, and let's let the let's let it run its magic here. So it's going to take us a couple seconds. It's compressing that folder. Let's see what we can compress. Those are almost always all JPEGs. And there it is. So what we get is 254. So we saved a little bit. We'll get the percentages at the end. 
All right, so the next one is movies. You see it here, um, same thing. It's got all MP4s in it, just movie files. So what we want to do is just before compression, click on it. I'm going to click Get Info. This one's a little bit more. It says 1.02, but I'm going to look at this number, 1005589226 bytes, just to see, um, I, you know, just so we can get a little bit more accuracy here. So let's go ahead and close that down, and uh, let's go ahead and right-click on it, and we're going to compress this one. Let's wait for it. This one's going to take a lot longer, so I'll come back as soon as it's done here. All right, so that one's finished. Let's go ahead and, you know, let's just for this one, let's go ahead and right click on it, click Get Info, just so we can get a closer number here. It's 1004837057 bytes, 1.01 gigabytes. So th those are the numbers we'll use. And the next thing is this is a mix of files. If you look in here, it's got Word documents, DocX documents, PDFs, everything else. Let's go ahead and right click on this and wait for the stats at the end. Click Get Info. So before compression, we'll look at this number here. It's 272.4, 272.4. Let's close that. So let's go ahead and right click on it and we're gonna compress this one. This one shouldn't take as long, it's not as large. So let's go ahead and wait this one out. About two or three seconds left here. And let's see what it comes back with. 214.7, so 214.7. And the last one here is all text files. So let's go ahead and open this up just to show you. Look at that, all 100% really large text files, tons of text. We're gonna go ahead and right click on this, get info. Beginning size before compression is 298.5 megabytes. So 298.5 megabytes. We're gonna go ahead and right click on this. We're gonna click compress. And we're gonna see what this creates. It's gonna go really quickly. Look at that, 1.8 megabytes, 1.8 megabytes. So let's look at the data. All right, now this is shocking. So if you look at JPEG only compression, 257.5 megabytes to 254, a 1.36 decrease in size by compressing. MP4, MP4 only. I use bytes because of the fact that it, we were a lot more data. I wanted to get finer detail. But on MP4s, it, it was less than one tenth of 1% 1 decrease in size by compressing. Crazy, almost no compression. The mix in files, you're gonna expect a little bit more. 272.4 megabytes by compressing it, it's 214.7. 21.18 decrease, so almost you know a fifth or a fourth, I'm sorry, a fifth, somewhere in that range. And then if you look at text only, it's crazy. So if you have a lot of text files, you can expect a 99.39% decrease in size. So realistically, the, the moral of the story is if you have a lot of text, it's gonna help you a lot. If you have video and JPEG, it's gonna almost do nothing to save size when you compress them. All right, so was that what you expected there? So as you can see, zipping different types of files isn't always the same result. So let's say you have a number of graphics or you have a number of Word documents or have a number of Excel documents. They can all be different as far as the space that you're gonna save when you compress them. That's all I wanted to show people here. So next time you're thinking about compressing something or you think you can save some disk space, you know, really it comes down to what kind of file type is it and are you gonna really save a lot? Is it worth your effort and what have you? Nothing mind blowing in these videos. Like I said, I'm just kind of showing people, you know, how to think about about this. A lot of people don't even, even think that they can compress or even realize compression is even available, but at the same time, they may try it, they may not get any compression, and they may get discouraged because they're not doing the right file type. So just wanted to show people what that's all about, and hopefully it helps a couple of people out there. If you can subscribe to my videos, it's going to totally help me out. I want to get this grown so I can make more of them. I need to get the subscriber rate up, so definitely help me out. Um, click the like button if you can and uh, give me some ideas on some new videos. A lot of people are doing that. I'm trying to create ones that I can see people want to see and hear about. I make a couple a week, and uh, hopefully I can continue if you, you know, if you subscribe. Talk to you soon. Peace.